Hi, my name is Yvonne Shu. Um, I'm the owner of Trustworthy Herbs. It's a family-run business. We've been in business for more than 10 years. We carry thousands of herbs online, um, and we have a couple really, really big um, warehouse that holds all of our herbs. During the years, um, both my mom and I love to talk to customers. And as the business grow bigger and bigger, we just have less and less time to talk to our customers. My mom used to love to just talk to customers when they come into the store or our warehouse. And um, it's not possible anymore. And I went into the warehouse last week and a lady who I respect a lot saw me and said, oh my God, Yvonne, it was such an honor to see you. And you know, it really shocked me uh, because this is somebody I respect a lot in the business and it just meant I wasn't there all the time and people don't see me around. And then at the same time, I kept, I keep having people who ask me to teach herbs. A lot of my teacher asked me to teach herbs. I'm like, no, 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 you go to school for that. There's, there's a lot of school for that. And people keep encouraging me. I keep saying no. Well, what's funny is about two or three weeks ago, one of my students showed me a video that um, somebody was talking about Chinese medicine. And she said, hey, Yvonne, look, if they can do this, you can do much better and they're getting so much better results, blah, blah, blah. Why don't you just teach your herbs? And I thought about it and I'm like, man, she has a point. And so I'm like, I'm like, I think, yeah, I'll try. So let's talk about herbs. <laughs> Herbology 101. When you go to school and you buy those books, you know, some of the stuff doesn't even make sense to me. Some of the stuff is just like really boring. And herbs is something really, really gets to my heart. Um, I use it, my family use it, you know, friends, my obviously my clients so the first one of the first question in the textbook is people always ask how do you categorize or, or they teach how do you categorize your herbs and different books categorize their herbs different ways in some of the old Chinese encyclopedia of herbs um, some of them they categorize by the usage of it some of them they categorize by how, how toxic they are and so you ask me how many kinds of herbs are there literally there's thousands anything can be herbs I, I mean we Chinese we use all kinds of things not just plants but we use seashells we use um, um, people's hair um, we use all kinds of weird stuff so there are thousands there there's thousands of different plants but the most commonly used is about 360 or 300 I will say and again um, Chinese categorize these things in top middle and bottom there are two ways to categorize top middle and bottom some of them uh, what I think one of the books categorize um, uh, how much usage, how good this herb. So the, the best herbs is top, the middle is middle, the bottom is top, bottom. Another books categorize by how toxic they are. Because um, there is a very common rule in Chinese herbs. 
where um, the the things that doesn't have any toxicity is the best. For example, goji berries is one of the common herbs, and uh, even we use green beans, which might consider as food, but we use that in Chinese medicine as well. So these things you can consider them as food. They will say, oh, this is top grade or this is the top because they don't have any toxicity in it. And most of the time people use this kind of herbs to give them more energy. Um, we say, you know, you add an, more energy to your body. The middle part sometimes have some toxicity or none. Um, and this is targeted toward medicinal use. And the bottom part, it doesn't mean they're bad. It just means they have more toxic to it, and toxicity to it. So, so that's how textbook categorize them. Okay. And if you're in this Chinese business, you'll see a lot of these um, old cabinets. Um, that holds herbs and uh, you know this cabinet in in America we uh, we treat it spe specifically for example all the paint or all the stuff that's inside we have to use um, certain kind of paint or you have to um, use a food grade bag to hold it and the way that's been done for thousands and thousands of years, I guess, or hundreds and hundreds of years, is that they, they categorize these cabinets by the usage of the herbs, which I don't think it makes any sense at all. Because you don't just use this section of you herbs you use all kinds of sections of, of herbs so when we when we first start our business when i first got involved actually i'm like this th this organization doesn't make any sense we got to change it and the way i changed it is i use um alphabet um, I basically categorize by, by ABCs um, of pinyin and that makes more sense to me. For me, it's just all my employees, everybody who walks in my warehouse knows where things are because they're categorized by alphabet. The way to categorize these things, not just by alphabet, but you have to be smart with it. You know how um, American law was categorized, they, they buy CFRs, but then they use a number system or how our old library used to categorize books and they use a six digit number system. Uh, any of you remember those really, really old um, library cards where you have to you know, go to the index card and find it? That's how you should categorize your herbs. You need to leave spaces for herbs that you're you're not thinking of. So so once you have all your A's or all your B's, leave some spaces so you can add um, more herbs to your system. If you're in a business, you might do a cabinet. I also saw some people do in boxes, and they they have these systems where. It's um, it's shelving system and they have boxes. They have you know, I I, I help with the labels, but then um, it worked pretty well. Just with um, they're almost like shoe boxes, but then they're plastic. You can organize by bags. It doesn't have to be in boxes. It can be in bags or drawers. You just need to have a way to categorize your herbs that serves you the best.